That's why you can't see. You're too distracted. And so what is my point here today? We gonna lay down every distraction, every weight. Those weights are distractions. So sometimes you ain't even got to the sin part. If you just can deal with the weight, you won't even get to the sin. That's why he put weight first. Lay aside that. Well, God, what do you want me to do when I lay aside it? Just worship me. Just praise me. Just acknowledge me. Just love me. Just adore me. Get in my face. Do that Mary part. Get at the feet of me. And worship. So the scripture, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth. Not my truth. Not my will. Not my interpretation. His truth endureth to all generations. So guess what else I'm going to do? I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually. If his praise is continually in my mouth, there won't be room for curses to be in my mouth and just talking in my mouth and bashing in my mouth. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul. My soul shall make her boast. Not my flesh boast. I need my soul boast in the Lord. And I need to be humble because the humble shall hear. See, we can't hear 
hear when we get in our ego and in our flesh. The humble shall hear thereof and be what? Oh, so that's why I was mad. And not glad. And then that last part. Oh, magnify and let us Oh, that's enough right there, ain't it? That's enough right there, ain't it? I'm walking out of here freer today. A little more delivered today. My head's gonna be a little bit more touched today. So God can be my rationale. Hallelujah. I'm just excited. I'm trying to slow down. Evangelist Denise, I'm trying to slow down. So we're gonna do a little bit of just wanna praise you. Forever and ever. For all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Y'all ready to do that? Y'all ready to do that? All right, come on. Oh, wait, I'm a little ahead of myself. Hold on. Thank you for being here on today at Joint Heirs Kingdom Ministry. Under the leadership of the Apostle Daryl E. Carter and Pastor Lady Beata Carter at Joint Heirs Kingdom Ministries known as what? The what? And things happen at where? All right, we there now, y'all. So, Father, we done said scripture. Lord, in the name of Jesus, bless the service. Elevate us. Expose us. Give us an experience. Help us to enter therein. Lord, those E words, those E words, open up my eyes and my ears, my hearing, and give me understanding. All right, now we ready to rock. Did I do everything? Did I do everything? All right, let's rock, y'all.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just want 
Media Team, you can put my scripture up. And know everything about me. You know when I sit down or when I stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it. You know the heart that I'm saying it in, Lord. You go before me and you follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Thank you, Lord. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, Lord, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest ocean, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and you knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watch me as I begin, as I was being formed in the utter seclusion as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Oh God, if only you would destroy the wicked. Get out of my life, you murderers. They blaspheme you. Your enemies misuse your name. Oh Lord, shouldn't I hate those who hate you? Shouldn't I despise those who oppose you? Yes, I hate them with total hatred, for your enemies are my enemies. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Psalms 193, the NLT version. Ushers, you may be excused. You can be seated. Oh, what a day, what a day. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I want to give honor to Apostle B and Pastor Viata in their absence as they're traveling back. We ask for traveling mercies for them. To the fine usher in the back, that one's mine. <laughs> That's my husband. To, I, listen, y'all see he back there blushing. <laughs> he doesn't like attention to be on him, so he's like Pastor Phyllis, hates to have attention on him. To Pastor Phyllis, my Naomi, I give her honor. She is just such an amazing, I mean, everybody knows how I feel about her because all of y'all feel the same way. She's just so amazing. And so I welcome all of you and thank you all for being here, everybody online. And to the grandparents, today is Grandparents Day. Happy Grandparents Day. <laughs> Darius is set 
settling into college and he, we talked to him this morning, Terrell and I texted with him this morning and Jediah, my godson's Cam are here. I'm so excited to have them. God is so good that he entrusts us with his most precious tre treasures when it comes to children. And so I'm so thankful, thankful for my kids. So I just finished a Bible study on the Psalms and listen, I could have went all over with this, but football season has begun and I don't want anyone blaming me for missing their game. My game, my team plays at one, Mother Linda, we got to pray because sometimes I don't be wanting to watch them, but this going to be our season. That's all I'm just going to say. This going to be our season. In this <laughs> so in this in this Psalms, um, David describes our God with beautiful imagery. How he creates us, how he encircles us, how he places his hand over us, how he leads us, and how he sees us. It's both personal and intimate. He uses the word no several times. And so I was wondering, like, what really is he saying? And so I looked up the Hebrew word for no, which is yada. And the uses in this psalm establish the I and thou relationship with God. Yada means to know to perceive and see, find out and discern, and this is my favorite, to know by experience. Again, personal and intimate. This past weekend, Terrell and I drove to Mass. We're, miss we're missing having the baby at home, so Terrell decided we're gonna go visit our goddaughter, who's six years old. And while we were there, Terrell and her and her older sister were playing hide and seek, hide and go seek. And she only got me to play one time, y'all. Because <laughs> I'm telling y'all, I was tired. <laughs> I was tired. But her goddad kept playing with her. And he said, April's going to hide in the same place every time, and she's going to do the same thing. So when I was playing, I was looking like in the garage and in the shed. And, you know, he's like, she's not going to hide there. She's scared to go in there. And so she would hide on the side of the house where there was this big bush and it didn't have a lot of leaves so you could kind of see through it. And she would hide. She'd get down and she'd hide. And then when you'd come around there, because she was small enough, she could get next to the house and go through. But in essence, she was hiding in plain sight, right? We do that. We're doing that right now. And as time is happening, things are going so fast, and we were talking about this at RTF, our meeting at RTF yesterday, there is an urgency in what we need to do because of the things that are happening. And so I was sitting there and I was watching Terrell in April and the last time April hid somewhere else. And so Terrell's looking for her all over the yard. And listen, that God dad was searching for his baby, okay? He looked all over. And he was looking, and he was looking, and he was like, did April go in the house? And I was like, no, she's out here. We just got to find her. And so he started saying, April, where are you? And in that moment, I heard the spirit say, you can run, but you can't hide. And after a while, April, you know, she gets tired of Terrell calling her and looking for her, and she comes running out, and she says, here I am, here I am, and she takes off running to the base, which makes her safe. A lot 
of times we focus on seek God, pursue God, and all of those things are important. Don't y'all go back and tell Apostle Evangelist and he said we don't need to seek God. That is not <laughs> what I'm saying. I am saying that we also need to remember that God pursues us. As a matter of fact, he pursued us first. And we see it time and time again in the Bible, God pursuing his people to bring them back to him. Even at the beginning of mankind's story, Genesis chapter 3, 8, and nine, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man and said, where are you? Here we see God walking towards them and calling out to them. And it says they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Why do we hide from God? Well, besides the obvious answer that we live in a fallen world and there are a lot of things that are happening, it can be difficult for us to wrap our mind and to understand that God sees us differently than we see ourselves. In Bible study, we're in Judges. Tell somebody, get here on Wednesdays. Bible study, we are talking about judges, and we were talking about Samson this past week, and we talked about how sometimes things are put on our life that we didn't ask for. So, of course, we're going to hide from this. Of course, we're not ready for this. Fear, shame, and the list could go on and on. And some of us are running from hiding place to hiding place. And we're running from family and trauma and running from the enemy. And we're running from ourselves. And we're in spiritual fatigue. When I was chasing April, I was like, this is not for me. I was like, Whoo. I was like, Terrell, your turn, right? We run ourselves from place to place hiding instead of running to the safe place. But let me tell you this, and here's the disclaimer for you because someone needs to hear this, I know. Being called, pursued, seeked by God, whatever word you want to use, will require you to change your perspective. Because it's uncomfortable and getting closer to him sometimes is hard. Sometimes it hurts. And it requires us to accept the opposite of what we're working towards up front. What do I mean? If God tells you to save money, you're going to feel broke. While he's making you rich, he tells you to heal some trauma, you feel broken while he's healing you. He tells you to set boundaries and you're gonna feel alone while he's creating new healthy relationships for you. Your ability to attain the things of God for your life will require for you to surrender, give up your hiding place and say, here I am. That's not easy. That is not easy. And sometimes it takes time. It takes time. Terrell was chasing her for a while and looking for her for a while before she finally came out. And she was like, he's never going to find me here. <laughs> Let me go out so that he can see me. So three points to accepting you cannot hide from God. Number one, God knows the real you. A few years ago, I went to a business conference and I took a workshop that was called Being Your Authentic Self. And the presenter started by asking, how many people can raise their hand and say, 30 people
people actually know me. Know the real me, not the Instagram me, not knows the always put together me, not know the one that everyone loves, but the real me, the one that sometimes fails and falls on my face, and the one that sometimes succeeds. And so he kind of kept going and he kept asking. He went from 30 to 20 to 15 to 10 to 5. And I never raised my hand because honestly, there's only three or four people that know the good, the bad, the ugly, and where the bones are hidden, right? That, that's just the reality, is that people know different parts of us. They know what we let them know, right? Trina knows me really well, but Terrell knows me better, right? It's just little things that we will show people. Psalms 139, in its genre and its precise dating, have long puzzled scholars. Sometimes people say it's a poem. Sometimes people say it's a prayer. It just goes on and on. But when we reflect on Psalms, it emphasizes the profound message that the attributes of omniscience and omnipotence of God. However, it's vital for us to recognize the true power of Psalms 139 emerges from its content. What makes these divine attributes so astonishing is their application to the individual's life. Remember that I and thou relationship that I talked about at the beginning? Down to the singular and intimately concealed aspect, from the grandest to the most minuscule, from the mountainous miracle to the microscopic detail, this psalm speaks to the limitless knowledge, searching, grasping, and holding of God. Crucially, this is intimate knowledge. Crucially, this, this intimate knowledge isn't contingent upon the worthiness or the excellence of the individual. Even when we consider that this psalm was written by David, a man after God's own heart, and similar sentiments are echoed throughout the Bible with different figures. Jeremiah, for instance, declares that God knew him before his birth. And the Apostle Paul in Galatians speaks of being called and set apart before birth. We also see this in 1 Peter and Ephesians, saying that all of us were foreknown in Christ before the beginning of time. Ephesians 2.10 suggests that even our future works were known to God. This divine foreknowledge extends not only to those who would come to know God, but as mentioned in Hebrews 4 and 13, nothing in the entire universe can be hidden from God. Everything is laid bare before his eyes, and ultimately we are accountable to him for everything in our lives. And guess what? He still loves you. Number two. You cannot outrun the Spirit of God. Yeah. Someone needs to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> it's God's grace we need. We need his face and we need his presence, even if we don't think we do. David asks the question, where can I go to escape God's presence? If I wanted to hide from God, where could I go? And the answer is nowhere. God is omnipresent. He is everywhere at all times. And I am so thankful for that because that has helped me really deal with the fact that Darius is so far away. And I say, Lord, I thank you that the God that you were when he was here in Rochester, covering him, protecting him, loving him, guiding him, is the same God that you are in North Carolina. God's attribute of omnipresence isn't David's main point here. It's true. But how that hits David is that God will pursue him no matter where he goes. God loves us with a pursuing love. Jesus did not come to be pursued. He came to pursue us and return us back to God. 
he said, son of man cannot, came to seek and to save the lost. And he uses the three parables of the lost coin, the lost sheep, and the lost son to drive these points home. God pursues us right to the cross and is forever pursuing us back to him. Amen. There was a season in both Mon and Terrell's life when we were just beginning our journey of faith and we found ourselves feeling a little uncertain at times it seemed as though we were evading or outright running from our divine call and maybe sometimes we were <laughs> but it didn't matter where we went someone came and gave us a word from the Lord it was so bad that Terrell started getting annoyed and frustrated, and he was like, you and Pastor Phyllis must be saying something to people. Like, how do they keep coming to us, and they keep saying the same thing? I, we would go to Syracuse, and he would say, okay, I'm going to go to this prophetic conference with you, but I'm not sitting in the front. And we would say, okay, we're not going to ask you to sit in front. We're not even going to ask them to say nothing. We're just going to sit in the back, and we're walking in, and the lady says, you with the red shirt. And Terrell's like, <laughs> and I'm like, and I look, I was like, he know that wasn't me. Like, he knows that wasn't me. We walking in together. But God said, I'm going to fix y'all then, since you still don't want to hear what I'm saying to you. And so we went to Louisiana, and we go to visit my brother-in-law, and there is someone there who says, you too. <laughs> immediately she begins to give us the word of the Lord we go to Georgia same thing and finally we get it that it's not our location it doesn't matter where we go if God has something for our life and on our life it is going to come and we thank you Lord <laughs> He's going to always find you, and he's going to always make sure that you have what you need so that his will and his glory come forth. God has a plan for your life. God has written the story of your life all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. God planned out your life before you breathed your first breath. And I know we have the amazing ability to make a mess of things. I know that I can go down the wrong trail and make bad decisions. <laughs> I don't underestimate that. But I trust that God's ability to make things right is far bigger. The center of this beautiful psalm isn't you, it isn't me. It's God and the amazing plan he has for us. Amen. A few summers ago, Terrell and I went hiking. And when we got there, we went up this beaten path. And it was, you know, we had to watch our steps and things like that. But there was, it was clear. It was smooth. We went up. And we had no issues getting to where we were going. On the way back, one of us decides that we should take a shortcut. I'm not going to tell you which one of us it was. But he said, <laughs> we're going to get to the car faster. And so here we are. Now we're in the woods. And we're stepping over logs and you know we're doing like this now we're bending down the branches all in the way grass is all high thorns scratching my legs and we're like struggling to get to where we needed to be now we got there but we was all bruised up <laughs> and I'm saying and I think it took us longer. It was not a shortcut. And God says that to us all the time. Like, you can come, or you can come limping, but you going to come. Okay? Ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit.
Holy Spirit, I just heard some of y'all need to be careful who you following because they're taking you the long way around. I'm the daughter of teen parents, and I remember asking my mom, how did you know at such a young age that you were supposed to have me? And she said, as a young girl at a Catholic school with nuns and administrators and other kids and parents, she said, I just knew I had to bring you into this world. That's God's plan. Because at that age, she does not know that she needs to bring me into this world. That's God's plan for me. My dad used to say, girl, you're going to be something special when you grow up, and I can't wait to see what you do. And I would say, daddy, how do you know? How do you know I'm going to be special? And he would say, I don't know. I just know. That's God's plan. That's God's plan for my life. Because as a teenager, he does not know yet, right? He doesn't know. God spared my life four times that I know of. That's not including the times I don't know. That he was there being a hedge of protection. That he was there to make sure that I didn't hurt myself or others. I don't know. But I know that was God's plan for my life. I grew up in a Catholic home, not knowing the word, not knowing the Bible. But my parents introduced me to God. And I made the conscious decision to say yes to the plan that God had for my life. And now I teach and I read and I lead the word of God. And I live the word of God. That's God's plan for my life. Before I was even born, that was his plan for my life. My sons are called. God's plan, right? Everything and every good thing and every bad thing, and God knows there's been some bad things, have all been part of God's plan. Like you said earlier, like the good, the bad, all of it works to get us to the next level. And if we change how we're perceiving that thing, instead of saying, this is a bad thing and I'm stuck and I can't move and I can't, yes, it hurts, it's uncomfortable and you got to take that time, but you got to keep moving and hiding is not the answer. Everything that is happening in the world, none of us thought that we would be able to say, This is in the Bible. The Bible told us this was going to happen. But it is happening. And so there is no time to hide. There is no time no more for the church to hide in plain sight. Like you said last week, we're doing the things. We're serving. We're coming. We're preaching. We're praying. But we're still hiding because there's still stuff that God is like, I still need to get you here. David ends this psalm in a prayer. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. God searches and knows us through and through. Inviting God to search us and know us doesn't change anything about God searching or knowing us, but it does change our heart position. Instead of trying to hide from God, instead of trying to cloak our sin, we ask God to shine his light on us so that we live life his way rather than our own. I am one that would say that I suffered severely from control issues. And I always tried to live my life the way I thought it should be lived. And I wanted things to happen that I thought should happen. 
in the way that I wanted them to happen. And so I did things to try to make sure that that happened. And that wasn't the case. Because God says, I want you to have this, but you have to do it this way. And we think that he needs our help. <laughs> and God's like, girl, I don't need your help. <laughs> I've got this. We don't listen because we're too busy hiding. When you're hiding, you're thinking about, I don't want to be caught. I don't want them to find me. You're not thinking about, God, are you speaking to me in this hiding place, Lord? Are you here? I need to hear you, Lord, so speak while I'm in this hiding place. Because there are times that the Lord will have us hide for our own edification with him. But if we're in that hiding place and we're not asking God what he has for us and we're still doing things in our own, it's a problem. Is that a prayer that you're willing to pray? Are you tired of living your life that way? Is there some way you've been hiding from God, afraid of his light, afraid of being exposed? That's an exhausting way to live. And God sees it anyways, y'all. He is an exploring God, but not an explo ex exploiting God. He doesn't exploit us. He loves us. If you've been hiding, if you are tired of feeling that spiritual fatigue that we all feel sometimes because we've taken on too much, I want to pray with you because I've been there. And I had people who came and said, I can see you hiding because you're in plain sight. It's not for people to see you come up. It's for you saying, here I am, God. And sometimes we just have to take a step. And, and hiding in plain sight makes you think that you're out there, but you're not. And you have to choose that what God has for you you want, regardless of if other people can see you. When April came running out, her sister was still hiding, and I could see her peeking around the corner to see if Terrell was going to catch her before she came out running. And sometimes we have to come out of our hiding places so those that are watching us can also come out. Because nothing is about you. Yes. Nothing. Yes. Everything is about those that God has connected to us. Yes. If there is anyone who would like prayer, I would like for you to come up and I'm going to pray.
myself totally and completely to you, oh God. Hallelujah. And greater things will come. music that say I surrender all come on and I surrender all come on There's freedom in the house. I surrender all. There's deliverance in surrendering all. 
Just worship. Come on, just worship. Come on, just worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
are everywhere all the time. You know us all the time. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you that there is no hiding place from you, Father. Lord, we thank you that even when the enemy thinks that he is hiding, we see him. Lord, we thank you. Father, I thank you for the word that has come forth, Lord. I thank you for allowing me to be your vessel, Lord. I come before you, Father, humbly, Father. And I ask that you continue to cover and build and heal. And Father, we will continue to seek. We hide no more. We say, here we are, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your protection. I thank you for joint heirs. I thank you for those who are connected to us. Lord, I thank you that you are continuing to move, that you are who you say you are, and that you are always found when we seek you, Lord. We thank you and we honor you and we give you all the glory because you and you alone are worthy to be praised, Father. I thank you, Lord. We honor you. And we ask that you continue to fill this place. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.